So today we're gonna dive into the science of hollandaise sauce. Let me get this off my chest. Hollandaise sauce is not an easy sauce to make and it took me a long time to get it right. But it wasn't until I actually learned the science behind the hollandaise and how the ingredients work together until I was able to make a hollandaise sauce consistently that I was proud of. So if you are struggling with hollandaise sauce, this video is gonna be for you. So let's dive in. So if you don't know what hollandaise sauce is, you most likely encountered it on top of an Eggs Benedict. But it's basically a sauce that's composed of butter or more commonly clarified butter, egg yolks, and acid. The most common acid being used is lemon juice. Now what makes this sauce so important is that it's actually a mother sauce. What that means is that it's a base sauce that can be used to go on to create many other sauces by small modifications. The most common spinoff of hollandaise sauce is a Bernier sauce. So what a Bernier sauce is, it's basically a hollandaise sauce, but it has shallots, tarragon, and some sort of white wine vinegar or red wine vinegar instead of the lemon juice. But if you want to learn more about spinoffs, go to my blog at kitchenconquest.com where I talk more about spinoffs. Okay, so what makes this sauce so difficult to make is that it's an emulsification. We're gonna take butter and egg yolk. The butter being mainly fat and the egg yolk being mainly water and we're gonna mix them together. If we were to just whisk them together, they would separate. But we need to find a way to make an emulsion so that these two products stick together. So in order to get these two combined, we need to break down the fat molecules in the butter and slowly disperse them into the egg yolk so that they'll stay together. This brings us to our next topic, heat. What is heat's role in hollandaise? When you apply heat to egg yolk, the egg yolks become more stable. This allows it to more easily combined with butter, which results in a creamier and smoother texture. In addition to the texture, the heat is going to help release and meld the flavors of ingredients resulting in a creamier and savory taste. So now let's look at the rest of the ingredients in hollandaise and see what their role is. First, let's look at the egg yolk. The egg yolk is responsible for the structure of the sauce. Egg yolks contain phospholipids which contain naturally emulsifiers, which like hollandaise, help support the stability of mayonnaise and salad dressings. These phospholipids have both water and fat attracting properties, meaning that it has the ability to bind egg yolk to fat. The egg yolk is what is responsible for allowing the texture of the sauce to become thicker. Egg yolk contains proteins which are comprised of amino acids. When you heat the egg yolk and incorporate air, the amino acids become slightly unraveled, denaturing it from its original state. The more you whisk the egg yolk before adding butter, the thicker the sauce will become. This might not make sense, but it's similar to whisking egg whites to make stiff peaks. The unraveled protein chains actually create a network that traps water and air, making it thick, and giving you a framework for a thicker sauce. In addition to the structure, the egg yolk actually adds flavor. As we all know, the egg yolk has a subtle flavor, but it's also rich and it complements the butter. Additionally, it works well with the acid component in hollandaise to make your sauce more tangy. So wrapping up the egg yolk, it has four main things that it's going to do for the sauce. It's going to add texture, stability, flavor, and it's going to be a necessary component to create an emulsification. So the next very important ingredient in hollandaise is the fat component, which we use butter. Butter is going to add creaminess, richness, and it's going to give that overall final sauce a good mouth feel. When the butter is added to the egg yolk, the fat is dispersed, creating the silkiness of the sauce. The dairy in the butter enhances the savoriness and combines nicely with the acid, balancing the overall composition of the sauce. So when we talk about butter with hollandaise, you will find that most chefs use clarified butter, and there's a reason for this. When butter is overheated, it can cause milk solids to separate, which can break your sauce. To avoid this, we use clarified butter, which completely removes the milk solids from the butter. So butter also lets you control the thickness of the sauce. If you add more butter, your sauce will become thicker, but if you want a thin sauce, just add less butter. So before you even start your sauce, consider the butter to yolk ratio. A general rule of thumb is for every half pound of butter you use, you want to use four egg yolks. And finally, let's talk about acid and its role in hollandaise. Acid is my favorite component in hollandaise because it has such an important role, but it's actually not necessary. The main role of acid is to increase the amount of heat the egg yolks can handle. Egg yolks start to thicken around 145 degrees Fahrenheit and it starts to curdle around 160 degrees Fahrenheit. This gives you a very small window to work with, making it easy to overcook your yolks. When you add acid, the egg yolk can withstand about 195 degrees Fahrenheit because the acid molecules support the egg yolk proteins. Additionally, because of the support to the proteins, it actually helps support the structure of the sauce. So as you can see, Lemon juice is very, very important in hollandaise because it's the acid component. But there is another hidden gem with acid. 
If you're allowing your sauce to get to 195 degrees Fahrenheit, you gotta think that it's actually gonna kill potential salmonella in the egg, which dries off at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Without the acid component, you would not be able to heat the egg yolk hot enough to eliminate the potential bacteria that is salmonella within the egg. So the next benefit of acid is to add flavor. So the acid is gonna balance the richness from the butter, but it's also gonna give you a tanginess in the sauce, which complements a number of other dishes, such as chicken, asparagus, or your beloved Eggs Benedict. The acid also contributes to the consistency of the sauce. If your sauce is too thick, you can add a little bit more lemon juice to thin it out. So as you can see, all of the components in hollandaise play a very important role, and when you combine them with heat, you create the beloved hollandaise sauce. So here's how I make my hollandaise. I set up a double boiler with simmering water. This is important because if you put your sauce directly on the heat, it would just cook the egg. The boiling water allows us to control the heat. I add my egg yolk and lemon to start and whisk vigorously. To control the heat, I stir for roughly 15 seconds on the boiler, then remove the bowl for 10 seconds and repeat until my eggs become pale and frothy. Then I remove the bowl completely and slowly add my butter until it's emulsified. I then adjust by adding lemon juice if it's too thick and finish with salt. My desired texture is gonna be thick, but not too runny. It should have the consistency of lava where it just kind of slowly falls and drips down. So this is a hard sauce to get correct and it took me a long time. So don't be scared to fail with this sauce. Just keep practicing until you get it right. If you have any questions, hit up the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Additionally, I'm gonna link another video where I make a beef short rib benedict with a barbecue hollandaise if you wanna see this thing live in action and you wanna get inspired to create a new breakfast dish. I appreciate your time today guys and I'll see you next time.